Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hi, hello, my name is Kim. I go by Kimber Kiss Casma Queen here on YouTube. Today is going to be a follow-up video from the reading that I had filmed the last time. So yeah, uh, that reading, if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It's titled A Twin Flame Reading, and it says uh, Most Important Messages as the title. I'll link it in the description box and also pin it in the comments below along with some other things, but yes, yeah, so that reading was insane. I received so much channeled information, and then what's crazy is I actually filmed that reading, and I had this book. This is The Sibyls, The First Prophetesses of Mami Wata, The Theft of African Prophecy by the Catholic Church by Mama Zogby, who is also known as Vivian Hunter Hindrew. Um, and a chief Hanan Amangasi, and I think I'm pronouncing that wrong, but this is the book. I had it sitting in my cart from Amazon for like months, and I wanted this book for like probably longer than that. Um, but something in me told me to purchase it. Now, this was a few days before I filmed the reading. I filmed the reading, I received this book, not even kidding you, like a day after that I filmed that reading. And I'm reading this book and literally everything that I had been channeling, that I, everything I channeled in that reading was confirmed in this book. So I'm like, what in the hell? I have to grab my bike. You guys remember from that reading? Other Gematria to pull up. These were words that I wanted to pull up in Gematria to see what other symbols were tied to them. Philosopher's Stone, Six Infinity Stones, Medusa, Magnolia, Mary Magdalene, Mary Magnolia, Zeus, Poseidon, Osiris, and Isis. Well, Poseidon shows up in this book. Osiris shows up in this book. Isis shows up in this book. Essences of Immortality show up in this book. Six shows up in this book as a 6,000 cycle, 6,000 year cycle, which is like the ending and beginning, which these original Sibyls prophesied, okay? And we were talking about that in the reading and Tartaria, the mud floods and the California incident, if you guys remember from that reading. And then also we have Zeus in this reading and we have um, Medusa in this book as well. So everything that I had channeled shows up in this book. There, that's no coincidence, guys and gals. That's, that's insane. It's literally amazing. But um, so I'm going to go over this book. I highly recommend it. No, I'm not sponsored. No, I don't get anything for recommending this to you all. This book, I highly recommend. It's amazing. It's so informative. It's going to change your views on a lot of things. It's going to activate you beyond belief. Look, there's even a mermaid on the front of it and a woman, an African-American woman holding a snake. And the snake is the essence of part of her tail. Yeah. So I was getting messages and I think I've channeled these before in this binder, which I will go through on a later date. But uh, matter I got was, these These are all my notes, guys, sorry. But I took, I, I took a bunch of notes and I, I it's going to be awesome, I promise you. You're going to be like, holy shit, by the time this, this whole follow-up from the reading is done, along with the other channel information I'll be receiving, I'm sure. Matter is ma-ter, like ma-terra, okay? They distract us with everything else but the truth. And that was something that came through when I was getting this presentation all together for you guys. If you look here, there's two tails on the mermaid. This is significant. You'll find out here in a minute why that's significant. But we're going to go through and we're going to touch space on some things. So Vatican, the word Vatican, the word Vatican, okay, Vatican means divining serpent. It's derived from the word vatis, which means diviner, and can means the word serpent. Vatican City and St. Peter's Belisca, and Belisca is also serpent, okay, were built on the ancient pagan site called in Latin Vaticanus Mons or Vaticanus Coli, which means hill or mountain of prophecy. So 
if you've been one of my friends that I've been or soul family members that I've been chatting with on Instagram for quite some time and we've been going back forth with messages that we've been receiving in my uh, Instagram messenger you know all about the mountain if you've been following me for some time you know I've been channeling the mountains um, stuff about Jesus like Mount Olives um, uh, Mount Golgotha uh, also the number four Capernaum uh, the number seven, the number nine, it all like coincides in this book. It's amazing. But I uh, so Kate Bush running up that hill. Yeah, that's something that I've been getting for quite some time now. Even before uh, Stranger Things became popular, I was channeling that. Okay, so um, Vatic is a seer, a prophet, a soothsayer, a diviner and divination. A soothsayer is to act covertly, to use hidden arts or magic, to practice sorceries or mysteries. And diviner means witchcraft, tell fortunes, fortune teller, bewitch, to consult a spirit of the dead, to practice magic, okay? All of this is going to change your views. It's really going to activate you and open up your mind to like so many different things. I promise you, if you bear with me here and stay tuned. Get yourself this book because it's amazing. Now, remember when I put this on my YouTube, I had pulled up this map and it says Mamarica. Mamarica. What does that sound like? America. They just reversed it. Okay. And this was in Egypt, ancient Egypt, and it was the real ancient Babylon located in southern Egypt. Okay. So. We're going to go over really quick who the writer of this book is, who the author is, because I feel like that's important just to have some hindsight on who wrote this and who is delivering these messages to you besides me, the actual author of this book. Who is Mama Zogby? Her real name is Vivian Hunter Hindrew. Okay. She's a fully initiated Hunan Amangansi, and you're going to figure out, you're, you're going to know who, what that is here in a minute. She is of the Amangansi ancestral Chamba, West Africa Voodoo, Mamiwata, and Afa, or in parentheses, Ifa. So if you've ever been on Instagram and you receive those messages or those profiles from the Ifa, I-F-A, that's what they're referring to here, okay? It's sacred. This stuff dates back so long ago. Um... So healing traditions, okay? She's part of all this. She resides in the United States. <laughs> I didn't get to that till just now, okay, of Mamarica, um, where she maintains her ancestral shrines and works full-time as an Amangansi voodoo priestess and godmother. Okay, so this is a picture of her here, this beautiful African-American woman who compiled all these sources and all this knowledge passed down from her ancestry line and produced this book for y'all. It's, it's just, it's, I'm dumbfounded, really. Um, born from the womb of Mami Wata. And Mami Wata is a deity, she's a goddess, and she's a mermaid goddess, okay? Yeah, keep that in mind. Remember my last reading, mermaids? Dragons, snakes, scales, all of it. Yeah, it's in here. Of uh, Mami Wata and the Voodoo Mama Zogbi's spiritual lineage descends directly, her lineage descends directly from both sides of her maternal and paternal great grandmothers and fathers who were Mami Wata and Voodoo priests, captured and enslaved as hired out masons and carvers in Louisiana. During slavery, slave, during slavery and Reconstruction, African descendants were forbidden to practice their ancestral religions. Many were persecuted and murdered. So you couldn't even practice what you believed in or you'd be murdered. Literally. Such was the case in the family of Mama Zogby, where her great-grandfather, Prince Hunter, was killed in Natchitoches Parish in Louisiana. Family lore recounts that he refuses to convert to Christianity and was chased into a barn and set ablaze. So he refuses to practice Christianity and he's chased into a barn and set on fire. 
literally. Over time, the Voodoo tradition was forced underground. So, you know, like the Underground Railroad and all of that, like, guys, this is getting deep. Like, I had just gone to the Underground Railroad. Yeah, if you're following me on Instagram, yeah, I had. Before my Instagram was put under review. Yeah, it's on there. You'll find it at Kimberkiss underscore Cosmic underscore Queen. You will find that. They were, their tradition was forced underground and a deliberate process of mockery and racist malignment, malignant, malignment began in America media, religious and educational institutions, creating some of the most perverse, undeserved and enduring stereotypes of African religions, which has continued unabated until the present. After more than 30 years of intense manifestational encounters and personal suffering, Mama Zobi received her first ceremonies in Togo, West Africa by Hanan Tugbal, who is a master, and Akwit Dirk Bach, 1988, and full initiations by Hunan Tugboy, Arita, and Danielle Sosa in Togo and the U.S. 1996. Sorry. She completed her final series of ceremonies as Chief Hanan Amengansi in 2003 to 2005. As a full lineage African-American priestess, Mama Zogby is the first to initiate many in the diaspora to Mami Wata, Mama Chamba Vurun, the Amangansi tradition. She is a graduate of Chaminide University, Honolulu, Hawaii of 1981 and Augusta State University of Georgia in 1995. She is world traveled, world traveled, South America, France, Italy, Czechoslovakia, Germany, Austria, Mexico, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, and others. She has been traveling to Togo, West Africa, regularly since 1988. Mama Zogby is also the founder and president of the first nonprofit, 501c3, Mami Wata Healing Society of North America, Inc., formerly OATH, Organization of African Traditional Healers, which recently won a long overdue victory with the U.S. Library of Congress in changing the classification of African traditional religions from the historically diverse label of occult slash Satanism to African spirituality, religion, and African American studies. Her hopes that her two-volume, well-researched book, Mami Wata, An Ancient African Goddess Unveiled, can be used, and there's two volumes of that, there's part one, part two, can be used as an instrument to shed much needed history and accurate knowledge on African ancient traditional religions and their crucial but long omitted role in laying the theological, ritual, and cultural foundation of the major religions throughout the ancient world. Okay, so I'm going to touch base on some things because it's really important. We're going to go over what a scribble is, what that means, because this is... Yes, it's one perspective. Yes, but it's huge. It's a huge perspective. It's a huge chunk of history that we've literally been lied to our faces about. Okay? More than lied. Like, this is like abuse. Like, literally. It's an abuse of knowledge if you think about it. Okay? So, like, being hidden from us and being distorted. So, thinking outside the Western patriarchal box, okay, and I'm going to read this to you, and we're just going to touch base on a few things, okay? I might have to break this up into a few parts because literally this whole book is the key to, like, everything I channeled, literally, but it's, um, it's amazing. So, thinking outside the Western patriarchal box, the idea that African religious traditions, ritual practices, social customs, divine prophecy, and fundamental beliefs once dominated both the secular and non-secular world in ancient times seems very hard to imagine. Even more, the notion that African women, the oldest human beings on the planet, laid the theological foundation for Judaism, Hinduism, Christianity, and Islam under the auspices of the black matriarchs seems even more incredible. But it's true. Considering the current status of African women around the world, one could hardly be convinced that her matriarchal presence and the enormous influence she welded in the ancient world had far exceeded the limited physical, cultural, geographical, and political designations of which Africa and her religions are confined today. One could hardly imagine, too, that African religions had reached very high levels of theological and ritual development. 
and that they were the original home of the world's first great oracles, prophetesses, and prophets. The absence of African women in world history as major players, as opposed to exceptions to the norm or mere appendages of great men, has been problematic and disturbing at best. And for the first time, her story is being unearthed, revealed, and told. So I need to go over this with you guys. It's so important, okay? First prophetess in the world, the first prophetess of Mami Wata were African women. They were called Sibyls, S-I-B-Y-L-S, meaning that they were Mama, Mami Wata priestesses and priests of the Oanes, and that's O-A-N-N-E-S. The more advanced of this matriarchal divine order are known as the Amangansis, A-M-E-G-A-N-S-I-E-S, -E -E in West Africa today. They can call up the dead and even the souls of the living. And they were the ancient oracle used in ancient Greece, Roman, and Babylon. Their prophecies are the oldest in the world. It is through the divine blood of these civil priestesses that the patriarchal kingships of the pharaohs, the Hebrew prophets, and the Chaldean priests were born. So you're thinking about who's in power today. They were literally born from the birth of these ideas of these original women. All right. The great Sibyls, divine oracles of the ancestors and God. Webster's Dictionary defines Sibyls as a female prophet or a woman able to utter the oracles and prophecies of a god or a woman who can foretell the future. Conversely, under the bitter Hebrew patriarchs, the Sibyls are condemned in their Bible as Behaleth Ob, meaning evil serpent slash spirit, or mistress of the python. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna go over this. Sybil, the black doves originally mean Holy Spirit, okay? So universally known as the black doves, the Sybils refer to themselves as sisters of Isis. What was one of the words that I got in my reading, Isis. They were the sisters of Isis. And sometimes prophetesses of the black Di slash Anna, Diana. The dove symbolized the sacred soul or Holy Spirit, an Afro mystical symbol later adopted by the Christians. It was the Sibyls, matriarchal groups who settled in Asia Minor, also known as ancient Turkey and installed Mami's worship more than 2,500 years before the Doric, also known as Greek, and Turk invasions. Mami, M-A-M-I, whom they knew as Lacoon with her serpents, was also known as the manifestation of the divine Logos, with holy temples scattered all throughout Asia Minor, which was Cushitic Mitanni Empire, and in Manoa and Mycenae, which is also the Aegean Islands also known as Greece, okay? Archaeological pottery shards date back, date the black descendants of the Libyan Garamantes, present-day Iu, present-day Iwi, Alades, Gaandam, B, I cannot pronounce these words, I'm so sorry, and the other African clans who had settled into ancient Babylon and elsewhere before the flood to have arrived in Manoa or Ionia as early as 4000 BCE. Hailed as one of the seven wonders of the world, these sacred temples were maintained by the Sibyls at a contingent of Vestal Virgin priestesses and eunuchs. Okay. The Vatican was the original sacerdotal seat of the Sibyls. So African, Black Buddhists, Umbrians, and Black Etruscans erected civilizations of what is now Italy thousands of years before the Anglo-Romans arrived. What is now called the seat of the Vatican in Italy was originally the sacerdotal seat of the ancient black Sibyls. As the first established sacerdotal African matriarchs, the Sibyls' cultural and religious impact was arguably the most profound on ancient civilization than modern history has ever revealed or cared to admit. From Mesopotamia to Libya, Mizoram, Kemet Egypt, Ionia, Minoa, 
Peloponnese, Turkey, and Mycenae, which is also Greece, and later Rome, the Sibyls were the primary divine Vatican and absolute moral authority. These African, Ameri these African women were the absolute moral authority. They were the matriarch. Yeah, they were. For centuries, the Grecian islands at Delos, Dodona, Delphi, and the Temple of Mami in ancient Libya were the ecclesiastical and moral hub of religious, social, and international political activity, and it was under the theat and it was under the theocratic governance of the civils as queen mothers that African matriarchal culture reached its golden age of achievement in medicine, religion, astronomy, philosophy, law, architecture, music, art, and social sophistication. Sibyls heal the sick and raise the dead long before Christ did. Okay, so here we talk about the seven wonders of the world and these sacred temples were maintained by the Sibyls, okay? Uh, the Minoa Ionia was one of the seven wonders of the world. And if you think about... Um, what I found on that ancient Tartaria building that looked like the Magnolia building that said she and her seven houses, which was taken from Proverbs 9118, which refers, and you can, you can research this for yourself, it refers to Sophia and wisdom and the original seven temples, okay? So this is huge. Uh, the, the divine oracle was a basis for the Bible. So the Sibyl's oracles that they predicted were the basis for our Bible today. And they were stolen. They were stolen by the patriarchy and forced upon them to then worship. Isn't that fucked up? It's fucked up. Yeah, it's really fucked up. Um, as the sole spiritual authority in the ancient world, the Sibyls were famous for uttering warnings and admonitions to the villages, cities, and ancient kingdoms, including their leaders prophesying their doom or fulfilling their hopes and restoring lost glory. They'd right moral wrongs and punish offenders of the divine law. And centuries before Christ, they were known to heal the sick, restore dignity and strength to the weak, and sight to the blind. And they were famous for curing lameness, epileptics, deaf mutes, and lepers. And they were said to cast out demons, even to raise up the dead. The last reference is probably meant to call up and materialize the spirit of a dead person. For example, the, a, there was a sibyl named Herophile residing in Cumian, Rome, who was famed for calling up the spirit of the apostle Samuel from the dead. And yeah, I, I need to go over this with you guys because it's so, it's going to like, you're going to be like, what the, yeah. Okay. Sibyl's Divine Oracles was the basis for the Western Bible. However, the Sibyl's most significant contribution were their famous oracles containing the divine prophecies that they would utter in a trance, in a trance possession. You know me, like when I zone out, I'm not saying I'm possessed, but I'm saying like, when you were a channeler, you know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about right now. These prophecies would be carefully written down by their assistants and complied into books I had gotten a message too that for some of these women, they had these written down by some of their lovers. Like, so I feel like some of these women, because I kept getting the number two, I, like some of them had them written down like literally by their twin flames. Um, and others wanted to keep that separate and they had them written down by like people they didn't care too much for also. So it, it was both, it was both for sure. That's a message that I got in the shower. These prophetic proses were the basis for Greek and Roman tragedies and plays. These prophetic books were later collected by the Roman authorities and soon became the stole and undisputed precursor to the Western Christian Bible and would later lay the ecclesiastical foundation of Western civilization. Over the millenniums, the civil prophecies, oracles, and revelations were systematically retrieved and purchased, stolen, or haphazardly collected by various means all throughout the ancient world where their temples existed. It was these books that would later be plagiarized, revised, or altered, and complied into one holy book known as the Sibylline Oracles. 
They would later become the center of the bitter doctrinal or hearsay wars between the warring Levitical Jews and the emerging Roman Vatican authority. And as the African matriarchal power began to decline and her colonies taken over by foreign conquerors, it was the thrones and sacred old power and prophecies of the Sibyls that was stolen from them by the emerging Roman church. Now this really makes sense if you know what, uh, the Tartaria symbol is and the Roman symbol and you have that double-headed eagle that is like the double-headed tail of the mermaids. You see how twisted this is and it gets even more twisted, okay? Um, I'll, tr I'll try to enter like pictures and things of what I'm talking about, but I think you guys, you know by now from my Tartaria videos and things that I've posted, but for those that aren't aware, yeah, they definitely stole a lot of shit and used it as their own. It's pretty messed up. Um, very, actually, beyond, beyond messed up. It is. Um, Thrones and sacerdotal power and prophecies of the symbols that were stolen from them by the emerging Roman church, their religions were later labeled as pagan, heathen, under a now racialist Roman authority. The emerging Roman church in their ignorance and ambition acquired and doctored the Levite Jews, corrupted versions of the civil prophecies until one could hardly distinguish one forgery from the other. And some of these prophetic books were used by the Vatican to compile what is known today as the Judeo-Christian Bible, crediting their authorship to conspicuous Roman and other male prophets. These books, for which it was hard to conceal their African matriarchal origins, were simply destroyed or relegated to hearsay. Gender God, gender of God, or was originally feminine. Gender of God was originally feminine. And it's so weird because I've had this conversation several times now. I do believe in balance and, and duality while we're here. You know, and I'm not saying one is better than the other. That is not what I'm saying. That is not the context of this book whatsoever. This is just to give you actual facts of what actually happened. Okay. Just to like, you know, to ease your mind into it because it's a lot. It's a, it is a lot. Um, so I've had this conversation with friends before. I have. The gender of God was later changed from feminine to masculine. The gender of God was later changed from feminine to masculine. Originally, within each prophetic verse, it is claimed the Sibyls made praises to Mami, M-A-M-I, as Mami Wata, Mami as Our Lady. They made reference to her as Our Lady. Oh, that's the same place that we traveled to. Did the same thing. Um, and proclaimed that she was greater than any other god in the world. Roman Senator Cicero, the orator writes the last three books of the Sibyl, Herophile, which were deliberately burned in a fire by the Roman governor, Stilicon the Tyrant. His name was Stilicon the Tyrant. That's S-T-I-L-I-C-O-N, the Tyrant. Stilicon was eternally hated by all of Rome for the sacral religious act, which prompted a universal reaction from poets, scholars, and musicians alike. So worshipped was the Sibyl of Cumia, C-U-M-E-A, that she was immortalized by all of Rome, immortalized, see, by all of Rome in one of her appellations called Europa, E-U-R-O-P-A, which, for which Europe is allegedly named. So Europe is named after Europa, a Sibyl. Sibyl's groups originally persecuted ones. It, it was the African traditional religiousness groups and not the so-called fake Christians who were the actual ones persecuted and finally enslaved. It was the Sybil style of prophecy and magic that would later be imitated by a militant faction from these patriarchal Levitical groups whom envious of her global positioning rebelled the divine matriarchal orders and seized their temples and overthrew their priesthood. In their jealousy, hatred, and rebellion of her divine authority, the Levitical Jews elevated their original minor deity deity, Jehovah, as an insult to her. Together, Jehovah and his patriarchal clan usurped her, sacerdotal and secular power, and from that moment on, they have worn it as their own. 
Millions of her people were murdered or enslaved and millions scattered to the four winds of all across the world. Remember, I kept getting four corners of the world. The historical evidence shows that it was these groups and not the Christians who were the actual ones persecuted and finally enslaved. The New Testament is finally is actually a the New Testament is actually a historically chronicle of the final destruction of all remnants of the African matriarchal authority. Books that were politically and not divinely inspired, which is why the Levitical Jews, en enemies of the Roman Church, refused to recognize them as authentic. Civil traditions live on in West Africa, so the history of the civils is not entirely dead. In West Africa, there of course not. In West Africa, there lives a matriarchal order of women who call up the dead, and many lineages of these women who were also sold into slavery in America. In America. America. <laughs> many women, many black women are born not knowing that their suffering stems from their disconnection with their ancient rights and spiritual duty to continue this work of their ancient mothers. The suppression of the ancient history of the Af African of the African matriarchs and their contributions to world religion, magic, spirituality, and prophecy is one of the greatest cover-ups and divine tragedies in human history. This author remains convinced that until this history is restored and until African women are recorded their rightful place in the world, there will probably never be any peace. Now look at this. This is that picture that's depicted on the front, okay? And I'm gonna read this to you. There's gonna be a few things that I definitely touch base on because it coincides with everything that I was getting and that I have been getting and it's confirmed in this book. Now, yes, this is one perspective from one woman. However, these are legit facts that she has pulled up where she is literally traveled the world, okay? And here, here's, so, those are the literal accounts that you can look up for yourself and do your own research, okay? So this is amazing. There's many um, testimonials on this book, by the way. Um, you can find them all over YouTube for free and learn more about this. Um, but yeah, I, I, it just it's so important that I had to touch base on all this. So above is a medieval, and it's this, Roman catacomb illustrating a mommy, Sybil, Priestess Amangansi reposed against the sacred ark or omfe ancestral oracle. It is topped with an imigato first fruits offering to Mami. The omfe is laced with a garland of mistletoe sacred to the African thunder god Zeus, Esculapius, Dionysus, or Bacchus. Resting in her hand is Asculapius, the African ancestral oracle, or As oh, As Asculapius. Okay, so this is. The Sculapius is the serpent. The African ancestral oracular oracular serpent. O-R-A-C-U-L-A-R. -A -A and I'll go into the serpent as well because the serpent holds a lot of different meanings and they utilize these serpents as a way to receive divine knowledge. Okay? Because they're very psychic animals as well. Um, and if you remember, I have to talk about this when I was getting all those channel messages from Mary Magdalene and then I had found out through research that she had passed out these golden rings to all the original women of the temples before their temples were destroyed by the men, um, this golden snake ring. And I had purchased one and then shortly after, like a week after, read about that. I believe it all stems from here. I do. I'm thoroughly convinced, like, of course, there's a lot more truths that need to be truthed and exposed, but this is huge. So, the oracular serpent emanating around her head is the golden nimbus halo, just like pre-Christian solar symbol. It's a pre-Christian solar symbol representing her muse or avatar status. The feminine word Raha, Radha or muse the masculine Moses, so Moses derives from the word muse, okay, is the exact same equivalent as Messiah, Savior, meaning bearers of divine truth and light. Additional, the word mago, M-A-G-O, remember I was getting mag and all that, mago is the feminine counterpart to the masculine word magi, meaning masters of divine spirit and esoteric knowledge. The use of 
mermaid imagery here and I'll show you this mermaid imagery. I'll show you a picture of this. It's all valid. Mermaid imagery in the Mami Wata Vadun tradition has been a dominant feature since the beginning of time. Literally, they have found this all throughout the world since the beginning of time. The oldest representations of Isis, Mami, Etergatis, Awasi, Dansu, and Ishtar were that of a serpent, fish, and mermaid. During ancient times, African and Afro element matriarchal religions received, reached high levels of civilization and its architecture, sacerdotal rites, elaborate vestments, and orgiastic possessions, celebrations covered the entire ancient world. They dominated the religious, political, and popular cultures of colonial and classical Greek and Rome. The prophecies and wisdom of the Sibyls and other African esoteric priesthoods were central to Christianity's ecclesiastical development and Levitical Judaism's survival. After the, militarist, after the militaristic defeat and decline of African patriarchal world hegemony, the Roman Church began to emerge as an imperialistic inquisitorial power. They then exploited and plagiarized the civil prophecies and usurped their sacerdotal rights and Vatican seat of divine power in Italy. They credited their prophetic works to obscure white males whom they labeled as prophets and as saints. They then waged holy war against the Sibyls, later accusing them of Torian, which also means black, heathenism. The Roman catacombs became the burial mausoleums for many of these persecuted and murdered African martyrs. The Sibyls and others were buried by their followers in these dark, musty tombs. Their beloved entering late at night to offer food, drink, prayer, and song. The use of undergrounds as ancient and an, the use of undergrounds in ancient Egyptian and Afro Chaldean religious custom can be linked to the slave survival practices in America. They are an important historical glimpse into the socio-religious and political world of the Afro-Greco Romans as they fought for their religious and cultural survival. Literally everything that we know, that we've been brainwashed to know, stems from these symbols that's literally been plagiarized, distorted, and ultimately destroyed and rebirthed into something that they wanted it to be. Why? Because they were jealous. And what's even more fucked up, that what's even more messed up that I learned about continuing on reading, which it does mention later on in this book, is that the Sibyl woman, like the original prophetesses of the entire world, did not even hold themselves in a high regard or think themselves better than anybody else. They had male priests that were receiving divine oracular messages similar to them, they did not think themselves better than anybody else. And these practices that they did, such as divination and predicting the future and like knowing astronomy, which it dates back further than what we actually know now, they did not hold that in a high regard. That was just something that was normal to them, that came naturally to them, that they used on a daily basis. It was nothing like that. But because people were jealous of the gifts that they had, they literally tried to destroy everything and put it in their name. And that's what we know today as the Christian Bible. It's the original sibling oracles that they took from these women. How fucked up is that? That is so fucked up. And then they sold these women to slavery and every, like you, you guys know history. Yeah, that's why. Um, so this is talking about, uh, two-headed people. I'm going to talk about this for a second because it coincides with this two-tailed mermaid at the beginning. Now, a lot of historical pictures and um, things that I found doing my own research, the mermaids did have two tails. And then it's interesting because the Romans also took it as two heads. But if you look here at some of these pictures that I found that are also in the back of this book. This woman has two serpents coming out from either side of her head, right? Now, what does this look familiar to? If I put the picture on the screen of the Roman coat of arms,
or whatever it's called, the, even Tartaria, you will see the double-headed eagle. The double-headed eagle. And also, if you look into uh, the Rothschild coat of arms, you will see a colonial white man literally standing on and stabbing a dragon at the bottom of his feet, which also represents the serpent and the mermaid essence. Russia is the conquered Tartaria. Just look at their coat of arms. And the Rothschilds. Closer look here, you see that uh, beast that the uh, Russians are trampling here in their coat of arms. And here's the flags of Tartaria. You notice that uh, griffin on the left there? very similar to the Tartarian Griffin. As the old saying goes, history goes to the victors. Just ask the CIA here. You can check their website yourself. Research the mud flood and fall of Tartaria. Question everything, friends. Until next time. So it's literally an attack on the history of the truth, and that's what it represents. Yet they put it in your face so you can see it clear as day, but a lot of people are so brainwashed and won't do research outside of what they perceive to be normal. So then they don't find any of this stuff out. So that's why I'm, I'm reading this. Um, they went around the world and they were um, interviewing some of these people. Um, it says a great many of those interviewed claimed that they were prophets and prophetesses because the cert, uh, I can't even talk. A great many of those interviewed claim that they were prophets slash prophetesses because the spirits called to them. The spirits called them. Not, not even anything else. A lot of them feel like, yeah, they were genetically, uh, it's passed down through, through their bloodline. But I'll just read here. The spirits called them or because their mothers or fathers came from a blood lineage of two-headed people. Okay. Or because they were simply born that way. It's in the blood. Okay, so now one might wrongly conclude upon first observation that since it was illegal for enslaved Africans to either read or write, such bull pro proclamations could be due to their Christian conditioning. The only good thing being Christianized, they were taught that resulted from some 150 years of chattel slavery and Jim Crow segregation. Hold on a second. However, a closer examination might reveal that many in the dysphoria may very well have been descendants of the Sibyls, the first prophetesses of Mami and the original goddesses whose history has been lost, stolen, deliberately culturally disguised, obscured, and Europeanized beyond recognition in the contemporary face of today. However, with an increasing number of African Americans finding no solace in today's scandal ridden, unfulfilled Western faiths desire to learn the true history of their ancient ancestral religions that once dominated the world. Therefore, the time is nigh that their story be told. This book, you guys, is amazing. And you, yeah, you can do your own research. You can decide for yourself. But there's a lot here that just makes sense. The church bells are going. A lot that I wanted to touch base on. Um, I wanted to read this part, okay? So... Before there was Jehovah, a minor volcano, fire, thunder, deity elevated as God under Afro, Afrim, Jewish patriarchy. There was Mami slash Isis as the preeminent dual goddess and God who dominated the entire ancient world. So there was goddess and God who dominated the entire ancient world for more than 6,000 years Nearly all of Africa was matriarchal, which means they worshiped the Divine Mother. To, the dominant presence of African matriarchy resulted not as a consequence of political feminists or military usurpation, but rather because it was the original and more importantly, the natural divine order of the African civilized world. 
is cosmology, philosophy, theology, ritual practices, and rich African culture emphasize the complementary relationship between what has come to be known as the masculine and feminine divine as it exists in both nature and within the universe. What passes for traditional African culture today where women have been subdued and relegated to marginal roles in African political and religious life is a result of the patriarchal usurpation of the older matriarchal orders upon whom the patriarch sought to contain and to control her divine powers and political and economic influence. However, hidden beneath this patriarchal substration of modern day Africa, one will discover that it was under African matriarchy which birthed ancient African and Mediterranean culture and high civilization. The first prophets of Mami were African women. They were called Sibyls, meaning that they were Mami Wata priestesses and priests of the Ones. Their prophecies are the oldest in the world. It is through their divine blood of the Sibyl priestesses that the patriarchal kingships of the pharaohs, the Hebrew prophets, and the Chaldean priests were born. It was the Sibyl style of prophecy and magic that would later be limited by a militant faction from these groups who, envious of her global positioning, rebelled against these divine matriarchal orders and seized their temples and overthrew the priesthoods as patriarch as patriarchy began to dominate in their jealousy hatred and rebellion of her divine authority the Le levitical jews elevated their original minor deity jehovah as an insult to her together jehovah and his patriarchal clan usurped her sacred total and secular power and from that moment on they have worn it as their own they did not create a new logos they simply corrupted and repackaged the original as laid forth by the divine African mother. To conceal their crimes, they destroyed and defiled her name and all of her temples. So when you see like the seven original temples, the seven wonders of the world, the seven, the seven, the seven, the seven, it's referring back to the origination of her and her seven temples. They murdered and accused her prophetesses and prophets of hearsay and witchcraft and disguised her sacred rights and divine legacy as their own. So they defamed their name, called it all witchcraft, and then they took it all as their own and restructured it to their liking. This trend of random destruction they continued so that the world would never again know or honor her as their divine African mother. Since their unauthorized acquisition of her divine authority, there has been little peace in the world because they have demonized the voice of her prophetesses and of her prophecies as well and continue to enslave and oppress her prophets and people. There has been no divine prophecy. All that remains are hopeless corruptions of her original logos and weak imitators such as and weak imitators such as Nostradamus. Literally, it says here, and remember how, much, how long I've been telling you guys and gals this, that Nostradamus literally stole so many prophecies of women and used them as his own of her divine prophetic style, a style originally developed by the Sibyls and those of her sacred priesthoods. The Jews whom after the 5th century BCE could neither speak nor understand Hebrew nor the ancient esoteric philosophy of Mami attempted to decipher the original cuneiform tablets of the black Canaanites that predate the Hebrew language. Their crude translations deliberately corrupted many of the ancient names of the black goddesses and changed the original esoteric meanings of the prophecies to what exists now in the Torah and in the Pentateuch. These now corrupted and worn scriptures and doctrines mass produced and distributed now in the Judea Christian Bible have been the cause of untold human suffering, massive spiritual ignorance, spiritual suffering, and devastating wars. This was especially the case between those rebellious sons of the patriarchal Afro-Pharaonic orders who themselves were overthrown and robbed of their secular hegemony by their illegitimate offsprings of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Though all late corners into this very ancient and divine epic, their holy wars claiming original worship or claiming original ownership of the black goddess legacy are centuries old and, all, and are all that is allowed to remain within human memory. 
Ignorant of their original logos established by the divine African mother, their present struggles to maintain the corrupted version, which favors an exclusive, currently Euro-masculine, patriarchal predominance, are nothing more than continuation of a centuries-old battle over which patriarchal son should control and reign over the sacerdotal power stolen and lost from her. The most coveted prize inherited within the secular authority are the spoils of her vast empire of land and mineral resources, replete with human replete with human carefully programmed vessels to exploit the sacred empire once bequeathed to the masses is now controlled by those who have benefited from her auspicious subjugation and degradation of the people who have known and have honored sacred rites and religious customs for centuries rooted in what are known today as the african traditional and dysphoria religions for many atr african traditional religious practitioners this revelation might come as a shocking and as might might come as shocking and unbelievable. The idea that African religions, traditions, ritual practices, social customs, divine prophecy, and fundamental beliefs were once dominated both the secular and non-secular world and laid the theological foundation for Judaism, Hinduism, Christianity, and Islam, and under the auspices of the black matriarchs, seems incredible. However, in order to understand that what has just been written, it is necessary to start at some historical point in our human beginnings. Clearly, the first question begs, who are the Sibyls? And why have the, why have the world not learned of their Africanness and their primary and sacred role as the world's first prophetesses or their major contribution to the divine history of world religions? So here it shows um, a picture here. And it says, uh, Glass Carthaginian, black mask, mask amulet of black mommy deity, also known as the Tanit, also known as the Libyan Liberia and Astarte. And you know, Ishtar also goes by the name Astarte. Above, she is shown wearing a beard, full, a full beard to exemplify not her bisexuality, as is often misunderstood by Western interpreters, but rather her divine complementary nature of both the feminine and masculine principles. And how many times have we talk about this in my Twin Flame readings? Like, how many times have I gone over this? In reality, the above is a modification of the divine seven serpents which represent the seven African powers and thus a manifestation of Tana as the premier oracle of the first ancestral masculine sun fire deity Adama or Bacchus. The white kaolin around her eyes and her cowrie shaped mouth represents, which is shell shaped, represents her ability to see and communicate with the world of spirit. This amulet was worn by the Carthaginian soldiers to protect them from death during battles and common folk to protect against the evil eye yes so they were like also these oracles for the divine thunder god zeus so taken from greek vase is black libyan athene or anath whose worship was transported to afro greece where the matriarchs but fled the patriarchal takeover in ancient Egypt and Libya. She is seen sporting a beard representing not her bisexuality, but rather her totemic aspect of the ancestral black dove of divine prophecy or ancestral oracle for the thunder god Zeus. And that's this picture here. So why were their prophecies stolen and corrupted and their holy temples destroyed or converted into churches and mosques where African and later all women were no longer welcomed at them? Why, e why was even the mention of black goddesses' names meant sure death or practice of her sacred rites and rituals guaranteed social ostracism, persecution, and even death? The story of the Sibyls is long and complicated because it has been so badly disguised, corrupted, and carefully hidden by the Western religious religion historians of the Catholic Church. However, some of it has been unearthed and is now being rewritten and recounted here in its near to original African perspective for the very first time. Because the Sibyls are still being born in the ghettos of America to the Shanti villages of Africa, and because it is necessary to place African spirit within its ethnic and cultural milieu, the right place of African women must be restored. 
The place of African women as the first center of sacerdotal power is not political. She did not usurp her divine providence and authority from anyone. Her place is the manifestation of the original and natural order as it was willed through the divine logos responsible for establishing human societies, moral law, religious institutions, and the sacred authority to maintain order on the earth. It is hoped that in doing so, a new paradigm might be established in which the African people in the world might view the patriarchal religious orders forced upon the world as the only divine paths to know their God. So the first Genesis, when the gods spoke or goddesses spoke through the African women. So this goes over that um, Ishtar and all of that. There's so much to this. I'm going to have to break this up in several parts. But I wanted to touch base on some things because I had gotten all those messages about the mermaids, if you remember that. So we're going to go over these mermaid parts. Oh, my phone's about to die. We're going to go over these mermaid parts because it's, it's accurate. It's legit. Like, it's proven in history that this is legitimate. So we're going to go over page... 30. I'm going to find page 30. Um, the word Sybil, I wanted to go over this too. The word Sybil is of mixed origins. It is the sacred initiatory title that the Africans called the prophes prophetesses or priestesses of the Mami Watas. According to some, it is derived from the black Ethiopian Kushites known as the Phrygians, natives of Mycenae, which is also Greece. Their names of endearment for Mami was Sybil, Sibella, Cybele, or Kybele, Queen of Heaven, Mother of the Gods. Some scholars believe that Sibyl is a Greek corruption of two words, Sioi meaning God and Bull meaning to counsel. Both words are derived from their afro aelitic dialect of ancient Mycenae. Combined, it reads as Sibu, which phonetically evolved into the English Sibyl. Additionally, Webster's Dictionary defines a Sibyl as a female prophet or a woman able to utter the oracles and prophecies of a god or a woman who can foretell the future. Conversely, under the bitter Hebrew patriarchs, the Sibyls are condemned in their Bible, uh, you know, as evil serpent spirit, which I read before. When all is said and done, the Sibyls refer to themselves as sisters of Isis and sometimes prophets, prophetesses of the Black Diana. So part of it the anu, anuki the idea of a soul savior probably began with the killing of the first anuki which means fish deity so this is page 25 i didn't even see this i will pull this up in a picture so you guys can read it and i'm going to write this down so i don't forget where it's at because this was part of the ones that i was trying to find earlier fish deity this is why the pope wears a fish shaped hat Oh, they're home. This is also why he kisses the feet of the black women and men and also why he worships the black Madonna in a photo that's shown in the Vatican of him doing so.